Hello everyone, and this is my review for Clash of Champions 2016. And, you know, to be honest with you, this show, it had a lot of good wrestling to it. It really did. Um, maybe some booking decisions I did not particularly agree with, but, you know, they went with what they decided to go uh, in, in the end, uh, along with it. And... Uh, with, that, uh, with that being said, let's kind of go through the matches themselves. Like I said, most of these matches, I can't even say were bad matches. Like it, it, But the show itself just felt off. Like it, it felt like it was almost like another Raw. Maybe this is an aspect of the, pay, uh, the amount of pay-per-views or anything like that. I know a lot of people have been talking about it. It's like, you know, there's a lot of pay-per-views coming up. Is it going to kind of water down everything? It might, I don't know that, I don't know though, but uh, like I said, it just felt like this was another episode of Raw in the end. Uh, so let's go through everything. Uh, you had New Day going up against Club to kick off the show. Actually, I consider that a good way to kick, uh, to kick off the show. You go off with guys who can get the crowd going really quickly. Uh, you had New Day uh, going out there, cutting their typical promo, throwing in boxes of bootios out there, you know. And the way the match started, Gallows and Anderson started off real quick. You know, they'd gotten back to their serious nature. So it's like, okay, things are kind of going around really well here. Um, you know, it just became more evident throughout the entire time. It's like they, like they were saying, it's like, oh, this is 399 days that they've held the titles. Like, oh, okay, they're gonna make the, they're gonna make them hold the titles for at least 400 days, no matter what. So you're gonna get some. You're expecting New Day to win, which they do. And lo and behold, it's like out of nowhere, they go the heel way of winning by um, by Xavier hitting uh, hitting uh, Carl uh, Anderson with Francesca too. And then, of course, they hit their finisher afterwards to go along with it. Um, I mean, like I said, overall, this was a good match. I feel like, honestly, at this point in time, you would... Like, what are they going to do with the club? What are they seriously going to do with the club? Um, they've put in over the New Day more, uh, again, in this case, uh, instead of maybe building these guys as the next champions or anything like that. Uh, where are they going with the club after this? It's kind of a, like a win-lose situation. It's like, okay, New Day's still keeping the titles. And you know, honestly, over the last couple of weeks, I've kind of been a little bit more entertained by their stuff. I thought they had jumped the shark, but they're doing a little bit better and bringing it back a little bit to go along with it, but it almost feels like it's time for a change with them. Like, you know, do they need to chase the titles or anything like that, but they're keeping the titles on for the time being. They are making mention of Demolition now in their record, so there's a chance that they might be holding those titles for the next couple, uh, like at least two and a half months for those next 70-something odd days uh, before the... Uh, before what it, uh, before maybe losing the tag team titles, so we'll see where they go with everything uh, down the road here and uh, with it, with that. But again, good match. I I felt like maybe it should have been the club winning it to try to put them over some more, but they went with the new day in this case, which isn't a horrible thing to go along with it. Uh, you had T.J. Perkins going up against uh, Brian Kendrick. Um, first of all, uh, they have these new purple ropes and like almost like a purple hint to the WWE logo in in the ring during the Cruiserweight matches. I actually kind of like the touch of it. Uh, kind of like the little touch of it. They're kind of differentiating the division from everything else. Uh, so aspects like that I kind of like. You could definitely te tell, feel a difference in the music and everything in that sense. Um, TJ Perkins' music, I very much like. But then again, I am a video gamer. I, a, a video gamer back in the Nintendo 8-bit days. So that 8-bit style um, video game music, I absolutely loved it. I, I thought it was great uh, it, in that sense everything. Now for the match itself, I thought they per performed a very good match uh, between, uh, between them. And then again, like I said, all the matches tonight were relatively good. Like they were all thoroughly enjoyable. But like I said, uh, like I said, fully in the end, it was like, it just felt a little off uh, throughout the entire night. But, um, again, really good match from Perkins and Kendrick here. Uh, you have uh, Brian Kendrick 
uh, doing a headbutt when they're trying to do like a, a handshake at the end of the match. And like I said, you get a different feel. It's like there's supposed to be a handshake before the match and everything. And you know, you'll have people who decide not to do that. And like they develop it as a competition and everything in that sense. Sorry, I'm, I, I have a little itch on my nose at the moment, so I'm kind of continually going to that. Um, <clears throat> But they develop it as, like, a competition. So, like, there's a handshake, and then there's the story throughout the match and everything like that. And, you know, it's a different vibe, a different feel, and I kind of like it uh, going through everything. So, overall, again, very enjoyable. The first couple matches, very enjoyable. And next up, you had Cesaro and Sheamus in the best of seven. You know, I, I, I'm going to put it out there. This was a damn good match, but, oh, my God. God, like when I saw Cesaro do the tope through the ropes and land on his head, literally I thought he broke his neck. And, and honestly, with me, I almost threw up because I thought I saw someone break their neck live on television. It was that gruesome to watch. Uh, I like, and when they were showing replays afterwards, showing the replays afterwards, even though he had started moving and everything, like you, like. Uh, for a small period of time, it's like you almost look uh, like he's like, oh, guy broke his neck and he might be paralyzed uh, at that time. Like, you're scared for a little bit. Um, he, he started moving and they started showing replays. I could not watch during the replays at all. Like, I could not watch them over and over again. Um, but they kept going, like, hard-hitting affair and everything. They go to a no contest, which leads you to believe, what are they going to do? Are they going to deem it a draw and then give them some kind of different championship opportunity, whether it be singles opportunity and everything, or a tag team opportunity to go along with it, or are they going to do redo a seventh match down the line uh, somewhere? So, I mean, like, very good match, very hard-hitting match, very physical match between the two of them. They laid it all out throughout the entire match. It was great in, in that sense. But please, Cesaro... Don't do that to pay again. Do, do not do not kill yourself, please. In, in that sense, but uh, we'll see where they go with everything with Sheamus and Cesaro. Up next was Chris Jericho and Sami Zayn. Uh, again, a very good match, and uh, I, I'm hoping there's a little bit more to this as well, like a continuation with this. They have Chris Jericho going over here, um, which is not a bad, oh, which in the end is not a bad thing because. You know, the way they're playing up this angle with him and Kevin Owens, you feel like a turn's coming in there, and the two of them will eventually face. So, yeah, Jericho's going to need some wins going into uh, that potential thing. But I'm also hoping they do something more with Sami Zayn and Chris Jericho to go along with it. I found this match very enjoyable. Um, you Up next, you had Charlotte, Sasha, and Bailey. They had Charlotte go over here, and which was a very, very good triple threat match between the two uh, between all three of them and it like you had uh thought out spots with all three like the triple drop kick to a standoff I, uh, there was things in this match that just worked and you're seeing stories develop along with it like you see uh sp no, potential tension between Bailey and Sasha. Like you had the little uh, scuffle at the beginning of the match where it was like Sasha was trying to get Bailey to just go away, but Bailey's like, nope, she's in this match, so deal with it. You're going to have to fight her to go along with it uh, because she broke up a pin like really early on. Uh, so you have that potential down there. Uh, they're teasing those stories going along in there. And also the aspect of Bailey getting pinned over. Uh, Sasha getting pinned, so you have that story with Sasha and Charlotte still to go along with, because guess what? The you know Bailey's the one who gets pinned, and now maybe the beginning of her hardship uh, going after the title as well has begun to go along with that. So you had some uh, interesting stuff within that match, and I thought it came off rather well uh, uh, throughout that entire uh, throughout that entire match. Uh, up next, you had Rusev going up against Roman Reigns uh, again. Again, another really good match here. Like, throughout the entire night, like, you're hearing this. Uh, it was really good matches. It just, it didn't feel, spe like, certain aspects of everything didn't make it feel like it was a special show. 
didn't make it feel like it was a pay-per-view. Uh, and that's the one thing that was off about most of the show in that sense. It, it felt like an episode, of, a very good episode of Monday Night Raw. Uh, in this case, uh, these guys put on what I thought was a really good match, very enjoyable match. It picked up even more towards the end um, between the two of them. And it just came off rather well with everything and uh, of course this time they decide to have Roman Reigns go over which does elevate the title honestly it really does with the way that they push Roman Reigns it does elevate the title and uh, we'll see where they go with everything obviously they're going to continue this feud in some way shape or form because there at least has to be a rematch or something in that sense go, uh, going forward so we'll see where they go with everything but again like I said very enjoyable match between the two of them uh, the aspect of Lana pulling out the referee and not causing a disqualification instead of her just getting uh, kicked out of the kicked out of the match was an interesting one to go along with it. But we'll see where they go with everything um, down the road here with this feud. Uh, maybe it was about time for Rusev to chase. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see where they go with everything. Uh, and the final match of the night, which was Seth Rollins against Kevin Owens. If uh, the match itself, I thought was good, but it's disappointing still in the end. Because and this goes back to months ago when you had the Universal Title Fatal Four Way. Triple H comes out, pedigrees Roman Reigns, pedigrees Seth Rollins, and gives Kevin Owens the uh, the title in, in that sense. Uh, you're expecting. Triple H to eventually explain himself. Where has he been? Nowhere. Nowhere. He hasn't shown up on Raw at all to explain himself. The last time you've seen him was the Cruiserweight Classic when he introduced the uh, Cruiserweight title. Uh, so nothing being said about Seth Rollins and why he did what he did and everything in that sense. So maybe you're expecting tonight he interferes with the match. So, you get through the match, you start going through the match, and again, it was a good match, and you're expecting interference. Lo and behold, who is the one who interferes? Chris Jericho. Okay. Uh, I mean, it makes sense, they're tight team partners, but you're kind of expecting it to be uh, Triple H in this case. So, like, a little bit further explanation of what's going on. Like, you know, even on an aspect of, even with Stephanie, it's like, you know, it's been three weeks, it's been four weeks now since that's happened. Like, even Stephanie hasn't had a conversation with her own husband about this. It, it, it's beginning, it's like, what's going on? Why did they do this thing with Triple H? They're doing nothing with it now. Are they trying to sweep it under the rug, which is weird because it's something with Triple H. They don't try to sweep that stuff under the rug. No, they finish that stuff. Uh, but it left it with, like, a little bit of a bad taste in the mouth. Uh, with that aspect of everything. The ending comes with uh, the referee being down, so shenanigans are happening with Jericho and Owens, and eventually it looks like Rollins has the victory, but uh, Stephanie, as Stephanie's sending out another ref, you know, Kevin Owens uh, uh, recollects himself and does the pop-up powerbomb to get the win. Uh, like I said, this was probably the only disappointing aspect of the night, is because you're it's getting to the point that maybe they're waiting a little too long to explain Triple H. I, like, I don't mind slow burns to storylines, but don't wait too long to do it. Uh, which, they might be getting to that point at, the, at, at this time that, you know, we need a little bit more between this whole Seth Rollins Triple H thing to go along with it. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we'll see where they go with everything. But overall, like I said, maybe this was the aspect that made it feel like it what ended up not being that special of a show was the aspect of maybe a disappointing finish to what was a good match um, in the end. Uh, but overall, like I said, the entire night of Clash of Champions had good matches. The, the action in the ring was really good, but it was missing that one thing to send it over the top. And it really just, uh, you didn't necessarily, 
or maybe not that one thing. It was just missing something that would put it over the top as a really good show. Maybe Triple H being in there would have done it to explain more of the Seth Rollins Triple H thing. I don't know what what it would have been uh, in there, but like just personally, I felt like it it was a good show. It was, but it didn't feel special in, in that sense of everything. Uh, so a little bit of disappointment to go along with the aspect that you know you were watching a very, you were watching a relatively good show in the terms of wrestling action you really were, but you didn't really it didn't feel special in the end, and when it should have, it, at least in my mind it should have uh, down the uh, and like I said we'll see where they go with everything down the road here, uh, but that is my review for WWE Clash of Champions. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.